fan of family chats we are here tonight talking Shit's creek i always feel bad when i say that word but it's the name of the show i promise so we are here with i'm maureen your host we've got amanda hello and tiffany hello and melanie hi and we are discussing our top 10 surprising moments and we were just talking before this it was harder than i thought to find surprising moments in the show but i think we came up with some so who yeah and surprising, by the way, doesn't have to mean like, oh, I'm shook. I'm shocked that happened. Surprising can just mean, I don't know, you weren't some, you were expecting the storyline to go in a different way. And it went, oh, way different than you thought. That makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Or timings. Like some of yeah. mine are just like timings and. Exactly. I, I don't know how on course I stayed. I just started putting moments that <laughs> I liked. So the we're going to go with this. Okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I got I got off track. <laughs> Who's gonna go first? Um, I can go first. All right. Do we want to start with my number ten? Yeah, and also these are not in any order because again, there were less surprising moments than we thought. So these are just ten moments that were surprising to us. Okay, I'm gonna start with when Stevie saying maybe this time. Ooh, I almost put that one. Did you? Yeah, I love that. I love it too. And I, think I guess that Jolie would be very proud. Yes, I love that one. That was uh, it just it shocked me whenever she started singing. I was like, okay. I um, I'm not gonna say what where I have it, but I have it much much higher. <laughs> Do you um, that one? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I don't. I'm not as outspoken as as Julie is in our groups and things, but I'm obviously a theater person. Um, yeah. And I think I talked. Um, and I, I've been on what I would call retirement for, for uh, twenty years. I heard Stevie sing it, and um, so yeah, it, was, it kind of inspired me. <laughs> I it's think awesome. I was surprised that she could, I don't know if I was so surprised that she could belt it out, but I think for her character, I was surprised that her character yeah. got up there and did that. Yeah. yeah. And actually probably the more surprising part for me, because it actually shows a lot of growth in Moira's character oh, was that true. she was willing to give, she was willing to give her the part without even auditioning her. Like it can't get any worse. I think you could really relate to this character as long as you can get up there and you know, scuffle out some of the notes. And she good, pushed for you know? her too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she really wanted her. She really felt like this was an important role for her. And I thought it's it's important for someone like Stevie because people forget, like, she didn't have a lot of family either or a lot of any parents and things like that. So the roses kind of took on that as well for yeah. her. And I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I really liked the Moira moment with Stevie before they went on stage. That was so sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not expect yeah. that from Moira. <laughs> yeah. Moira's, I think she's one of the more surprising characters because of her growth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, you see growth in in David and <laughs> I can't not, when I'm talking about this, I can't not say his name weird. My husband's name is also David and I don't say his name like David. <laughs> 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 I think of him, there was growth in that he let somebody else in, but he's essentially the same person. I mean, he loves better because Patrick, I think, helped him to to recognize that part in himself. And with Alexis, I think it's the same thing. But overall, I think they were already pretty decent people who were just broken. So I don't think their character themselves is that altered other than they just let people in and they were healed through that. But I think with Moira's character, I think we saw the most alteration from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I loved her and Alexis. Yes. Well, all their growths are amazing, but yeah, I was thinking about that really today. Weird when you say it like that, really, what? Yeah, all their growths. Alexis really grew um, a lot. I was thinking about that when I was writing this list. I was like, wow. Like, I mean, I don't think she gets. You know what I was saying? She yeah. gets the Valley Girl credit, and like, she's really not by the end of the story. I mean, she's a completely. And what's funny is it doesn't seem like a 180 either with her. It just seems like an evolution. Like this is oh, yeah. where she went on, you know? Yeah. She so. still has her. She's still herself. Exactly. Yeah. She's just 
grown up. Her hat loving, fabulous self. Yes. And I think before, like with all the amazing stories she told about being kidnapped, and really one person did not have that many of them. I think a lot of that came from this is who she always was, but she was never given the free reign to be who she was until she uh -huh. came to this town where people didn't care about status. Yeah. So I think even she is, she's much the same. She was just allowed to be who she was, really. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, who's got who's gonna do the next number 10? Um, this is kind of I oh who said that they can go whoever it was. No, you okay. Um um I was gonna say my 10 is kind of silly, but it's I guess I was surprised that the Jazza girls were actually good. Oh, <laughs> you know? Yes, that's like, a good you know point. what I'm saying? Like, um, it's like when you walk in and you're almost expecting it to be like a sister act type thing. She's going to change this group around. That's exactly what I thought. Amazing. And like, I love that about the show that it'll take stuff like that, your expectations, yep. and it'll divert them, you know? Oh, yeah. And I just, it, they were really good. And she was the one, she's like, oh my God, I'm like really out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the song she auditioned with? I forget. It was terrible. <laughs> And right before her was this girl who sang like this beautiful, almost operatic know, voice. So and Maria just it's got so more amazing. and more freaked out. <laughs> I, love, I was just watching the YouTube video of her doing the scat with the little handheld maraca the other day. Oh. I love it. <laughs> yes. I mean, is there anything better than Catherine O'Hara playing this part? Oh, like, Catherine O'Hara. I, I, no. I love her. Oh. Also, I have a two-year-old. And well, she's all she's two and a half. She's gonna be three in a couple months. But when we say goodnight, I always say goodnight, my babies. And so she says it back Aww. to me, and she'll say goodnight, my baby. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> please don't ever stop saying baby that way. <laughs> every That's time she awesome. says it, my husband, because my husband and I watch this show together. So every time she says it, we just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tiffany, what's your number ten? Okay, um, the. I'm trying to find out which one I want to do. It's hard. Oh, um, the season four when uh, back to Alexis when Alexis chose to stay instead of taking the job with her friend. Mm. I think that was you know really growth on Alexis. Yeah, that yeah. she actually chose to stay in Schitt's Creek instead of going off with her old friends. That I didn't expect that from her at I actually all. Forgot that happened, but that's a really good one. Oh yeah. Because when they first came back in the town, she was trying really hard to impress them and let them know that, you know, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome. But that she actually found worth in herself for the first time. That was awesome. Yes. Again, growth. Yeah. Because I think she's always been a cool person. I think she's always been a good person. She just never realized it. Yeah. Definitely. And you can see that in what's going to be my number 10 of when uh, Alexis is unable to break up with Ted. Oh. She's not doing that because she's selfish. She's doing it because she doesn't want to hurt his feelings. Yeah. But I love when Mutt comes in the room and he's like, so how did it go with Ted? <laughs> she ends up on the chair with her knees up to her chest and she's just playing with everything on the desk <laughs> <laughs> what did she say can i just write him like um a really nice letter is that what she said <laughs> yeah <Like> that? <laughs> that was my number 10 when she that she can't break up with ted because she tells all these stories of you know when i had that one night stand with zach efron and you know all these things she talks about where you would think that she has no problem shutting someone down that she's like, because that's the impression she tried to give at first was she's so elitist. She's so much better that she can just do whatever she wants, but she genuinely cared for people's feelings. She loved Ted. Yes. I don't think she knew it at that point though. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a little of both. And I think it's, I don't know. I would say it's probably in her mind a lot different on a one night stand than it is, you know, someone she was having a relationship with but and yeah. I don't know I get the impression that she's never had like and it's a little bit in first season I was watching a couple of the old episodes with so those are the ones that like I don't remember as much you know yeah. and so I was watching some of those and um and you know that guy she was gonna run off with who was that absolutely was horrible to her right yeah and um they were all like he's horrible you could not do this <laughs> and um she goes and, and like, I get the impression that she hasn't had a lot of people and David as well, haven't had a lot of people that actually 
been nice to them and cared about them as people and not, you know, whatever, whatever these guys wanted out of her. I mean, I think I can pick some names if I'm trying to be nice. So (laughs) thank you for that. (laughs) because <laughs> yeah, you know that i mean david for sure never had a relationship longer than four months that was mentioned on the mm-hmm. show yeah i think she's had relationships that are longer but i don't think they were i don't, I don't think, think they were good guys they had any but, value yeah. to them no right it was just like surface level we have we each have money we each like to party let's go do this sort of thing and i think right. that comes from i think the set they hang out with all had the same problem that they had parents who were absent parents who just had a boatload of money and could send them anywhere and I mean, that was evident when she would tell some of her stories and Johnny's like, you did what when you were how old? Because <laughs> the parents just weren't there. And I think that's the set they hung out with. And I think that unfortunately- I mean, they don't even really remember their kids' middle names. You know, like- <laughs> <laughs> That should have been one of my surprising moments. <laughs> that they can't remember. <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> well, the, the, we did find out both of their middle names at some point, right? I don't That's think we ever do. Yeah. I don't know. No, we do because um, I can. I know we do. I just don't remember what. At least we know. I'm like, did they say it at the wedding, wedding? I think, but I don't but, know if we ever learned Alexis. Um, and, yeah, no, not Annie. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Alexis. Um, Ted used her full name when he proposed. I got. I it. remember. I Claire. remember it, but I don't remember what it was. Alexis Claire. Alexis Claire. Alexis Claire. Okay. I don't I don't remember him saying that at all, but that makes sense that he would do that because that's you know that's Ted. That's his personality. We don't have he's David's. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think I know David. David didn't the have way. one, right? I thought they didn't give him one. They didn't, I mean, in the cast Be- list. Because David didn't know. He was like, Alexis has a middle name. Do I have yeah, a middle name? Right. He probably doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I think it's just David Rose. I mean, that's everything I can find. Yeah. Alexis Claire Rose, and then under it, it's David Rose. Oh, Johnny and yeah. Moira are parenting goals right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how Moira does that, though, of Alexis, come in here and sign this paper for me. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach already hurts from belly laughing. This show is so good. <laughs> it oh, is. it's so good. All right, um, Amanda, what's your what's your number nine? All right, my number nine is when Rachel, Patrick's ex fiance, oh. showed up at the barbecue. Yes, that was surprising. Yes, yes, that was so good. <laughs> yeah, I have that one on my list too. <laughs> Do you, Tiffany? Yes. Didn't well, you just put something about that in our group today? Yes, about how they were yeah. good friends and they went to Japan. Yeah, uh, Dan and the actress who played Rachel, they're they're really good friends, and they went to a to japan in 2018 together oh i missed that post i think i'll go back Aww. i'm a better member than you are it's okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i'm in more groups than you are it's <laughs> true good point <laughs> technically i'm in all of them i just don't participate in all oh of yeah them. you just joined but that is that is a good surprising moment i love when <laughs> alexa because that's when alexis is talking about the one night stand with zach efron isn't it i think so because they're trying yeah. to dissect the text messages and rachel yeah. tries to get it out of stevie what it means <laughs> I did feel bad for her. That was that one cracked me up. It was also shocking, at, kind of. Yeah, that was the start of um, <laughs> David not telling Patrick he forgave him because he was giving him gifts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one had ever showered him with that many gifts before, and he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Patrick just kept going. <laughs> until is it is that the same episode where patrick asked him to get him a tea and david came back oh no that was when he said i love you that's a different scene in there yeah but patrick did handle i love how patrick has handled every situation like that with david yeah. patrick is a master at how to handle things like patrick is my i want to be relationally like patrick is because he's way smarter than i am about this <laughs> he is he was great <laughs> melanie what's your number nine my number nine was um that moira wasn't always rich Oh, I forgot uh, about that too. Yeah. I forgot about that too. <laughs> um, and I, I guess it's not like super, super surprising, but like you got the way they did it in the episode was like, oh, because like they, 
she started with her empanada recipe mm -hmm. and she's like, yeah, I made this when I was younger. And you get the impression she's never made this in her life. Right. <laughs> like that's my whole thing. I was like, oh yeah, this is some grandma's recipe that you have never seen in your life. <laughs> and like, but by the end of it, you both, you know that she did used to know how to do this and she's forgotten it all because it's kind of sad in a way, you know, but I could yeah. easily, it's, it's also realistic because I could easily see that happening. If you haven't cooked in so many years and you have everybody to do everything for you, like those oh. basic things that you used to find joy in mm -hmm. are just going to change, right? They're going to change to your wigs or whatever <laughs> Moira finds joy in now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> everything you're saying is bringing up another hilarious memory from the show <laughs> i'm trying to not interrupt but i'm like i can't stop giggling to myself <laughs> all i wanted to say the whole time you were saying that story was you have to fold it in david <laughs> i actually didn't get the impression that she had made that before i felt like i don't know when moira said that to jocelyn i kind of felt like her home life was really rough not just not just that mm -hmm. she was poor, not just that she was poor but that she didn't really have that great appearance is kind of what I imagined when she was telling Jocelyn that story. So I kind of figured yeah. that her grandmother did pass down this recipe, but she never got to make it. She just has always had it and that she had yeah. her cook to make and her cook made the Ibanon recipe. But I did, that is surprising though, because I, I think it actually is surprising because through the whole show, there's basic things that she doesn't know how to do. So you're right. Mm -hmm. That's how they set it up. So that it was, it was like, mm -hmm. wow, you don't know how to do anything that a normal person <laughs> like knows I how to do. I was full on the whole when we found out when we were going to find out how all this happened. It was all that Moira had all the money and Johnny inherited and started the business and did all did everything with her money. Like that's yeah. the way it seemed like that for a while on the show because she she just seemed so proper. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, but it wasn't that. <laughs> I mean, not that Johnny was rich. I think they were both pretty normal at that point. Mm -hmm. But um, everything took off. I agree. That's a good one. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Didn't she reveal that to Jocelyn when they were stoned after the wine party? Yeah, I think yes. so. <laughs> and obviously we meet her sister later. But I mean, yeah. yeah. Her old Dee Dee was great. I loved Dee Dee's her. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, what's your number nine? Um, the general store, when David decided to start the general store, mm -hmm. that, I mean, that was just one of my favorite moments in the show. And then when Patrick decided to jump on board and go into business with him, I really liked those episodes with, yep. uh, David and Patrick together starting the store. Yeah. Those are some of my favorites. Those 10 voice messages he left for Patrick. <laughs> one, he say, hi, David, this is Patrick. Did I just, no, no. <laughs> He called back. I think I called you David. You're not David. <laughs> I just, I want, okay, Daniel Levy, if you are listening, please put together like a video of all of those messages in detail that he, that your character left for Patrick, because I would listen to that on repeat. Yes. Please, please. <laughs> There's so many good moments. We need some TikToks or disgruntled Pelicans. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My number nine is um, David and the high school, the high school kid. Dude, I don't think we ever yeah. got a name for him, did we? The kid that um, Jocelyn wanted him to mentor. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Like, the fact that you want me to speak into someone else's life should scare you like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that when he did, he was so bad at it. Like, yes. you got some relational Terrible. thing there, but there was zero. <laughs> There, this nothing. kid just handed his and I love the, the right why it was surprising why I put on my list is that David ended up asking this kid for advice on how to be who he is and David has always seemed very like no this is who I am this is what I'm like but he was asking this high school kid advice on his relationship oh my gosh that's so sad <laughs> poor David <laughs> wasn't there a point when the high school kid was like are we done here and then David knocked over the whole solar system <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. My stomach, legitimately, my stomach and my sides hurt right now. Amanda, what's oh. your number eight? Me? Yeah. Um, let's see, what's my number eight? I'm trying to put them in order now as we go. 
I have them in order, but I was, I'm still playing with them in my head. <laughs> um, I say when Patrick came out to his parents. Mm. I love David that moment. Red one. Didn't David do it to his parents first for him accidentally? Johnny. I think Johnny so. did it by something accident. Something happened. David oh, was it something. Johnny who did it? Yeah, because he was talking about That's their right. rela business relationship and their actual relationship, and they only mm -hmm. knew about the business side. <laughs> That's right. I remember that now. Yes. I had, I had that one on my list too. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That was a really sweet moment, though. And the way that his was. parents reacted, how I love that his parents didn't react in any way that he thought that they might react. Yeah, oh, yeah. that was it made me nervous. I was like, oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, please don't do this. And then, I mean, it was a great it was a great scene. Yeah. After the scene with Johnny, they kind of just shut down and left the room. Yeah. So I thought, oh, great they're not yeah. happy about this but yeah in the end when he actually told them it was so sweet how they reacted okay tiffany think, was on your list too that either one of you remember what the parents said no nope. <laughs> i just remember being like oh it, it was words. very sweet it's what yeah. every I, it's what every parent how every parent should handle that situation and it was yeah. perfect and i'm glad they didn't turn it into a joke either mm -hmm. you know yeah um I am too. It was it was very real and sincere, and I thought it was a sweet moment. Yeah, I agree. By like the way, happy moment pride with David Day. and Patch. Oh. <laughs> what? What? I said happy Pride. Yeah, I was just thinking pride. <laughs> we're recording this on June first, which is the start yeah. of Pride that's, Month. Wow, in America, at least. I don't know if it's international or not. But very all right, true. Melanie, what's your what's your uh, number eight? Number eight was um, when, at the very, very, very end, um, when Twyla paid the money for the dresses <laughs> yeah. um, as a gift to um, to Lexus, and I just thought that was just so sweet. And to find out that Twyla's have money for a while, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Which look on Alexis's surprised. face. Nothing, nothing that came out of Twyla's <laughs> mouth was surprising to me, but yet like okay but um the I fact live for her small talk moments in the cafe I know <laughs> Twyla's so amazing and like the fact that everything like this could have happened to Twyla and she's still Twyla it's just it's it's gold it's amazing I'd like, like to be um, her as a person without the scary yeah. stories <laughs> To be that happy all the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But not scarily happy, just always upbeat and friendly and caring. And exactly. Twyla always looks for the better side of things rather than mm -hmm. jumping right to the negative. And she's gonna rock New York, you yes. guys. When she comes. Oh yeah. She's gonna rock it. I forgot. Was she going to New York? Is that how it ended? No, well, that's it. like no, she was um Alexis was going to New York yes. and she said, and she said, well why don't you hold on to the money to come visit me? And they said, and she goes, no, you need it to get started up, but I will definitely come visit you. That's basically yeah. how it goes. Yeah. I love Twyla. Tiffany, what's your number eight? I do wish we got to see more of Twyla, actually. Yes, I agree. I'm, I'm sad we didn't get more of her. Spin-off. Yeah. Let's do a spin-off with just Twyla and Alexis in New York. <laughs> <gasps> we should do Twyla and Alexis in New York. Oh awesome. my God. That would would be so amazing. watch that. You know what? That would be like Emily Paris sewing good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it was, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, what's your number eight? Um, the singles week with Ted and Alexis. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that Alexis was able to do all of that by herself for that right there was just so much growth on her part. Mm -hmm. But then when Ted and Alexis came in that moment, I was not expecting Ted to do that. No, that was no. very surprising to me. But I was so happy that he did because that was the sweetest moment ever. Mm -hmm. And then David's face when he did it and David actually teared up for his sister. Yes. That, that scene makes me emotional. I love that scene. I think Ted and Alexis are my favorite couple. I really do. I know that Patrick and David are the favorite for most, but Ted and Alexis are my favorite, I think. It's a tie. I, I think mine's a tie. Like I really I can't I, I can't really say I like one more than can, another. Can I be honest? Not not like 
really like romantically at all. Um, but my favorite couple, I mean, if we want to go couple, couple, like is David and Stevie, like, you know, so, um, they don't a couple at all, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, they're, they're a relationship though. Yeah, they are. And I think it's, yeah. I, I did love, I love their relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I love their banter back and forth. Yes. And I love how, how intimate they get without mm -hmm. actually diving deep emotionally. Like they do dive mm -hmm. deep emotionally, but they don't even realize it. How mm -hmm. what does what does David say when he first meets her? Doesn't he say, You're sorry, um, I like you, or something like that? You're sorry, says, yeah, I like you. Yeah, it was something well, the first thing, but like it was like the second one. Like, yeah. um, yeah, when she was like, Okay, well, it's not a cool rave, but you want to come to this crappy party with me uh, because that was I the second episode there anyway <laughs> i was i was just watching that episode today <laughs> i also love the episode <laughs> where he goes in there he's like guessing by the by the way this place looks i'm i'm pretty sure the the answer is no but do you have a business center <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that was a weird question am i weird i've stayed in like i've never stayed in a hotel that didn't have some type of business center maybe that not that maybe type that of hotel. hotels <laughs> motels don't have business centers hotels oh, that's, do. yeah that's true and that was the yeah. same time roland took their doors <laughs> I was I could not stop laughing earlier today watching it. I was like, oh my gosh. That wasn't even on my list. That should have been on my list. It should have been on your list. But it wasn't shocking. It was funny. <laughs> my other my honorable mention is when Roland moved them into their place, watched them unload everything, and then introduced himself. And then sat in their bathroom for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The window doesn't open. This whole, this whole, this whole list could be a scene of surprising Roland. Yes. yes. Who does that? <laughs> and then when Johnny just loses his cool adventure, he's like, "Roland, get the hell out of here!" <laughs> oh. Okay, moving on to the list. These aren't even on our list, but these are great. <laughs> Okay. Listen to that. You're making us belly laugh, Levies. Good job. <laughs> um, my number eight is Johnny rejecting the bagel proposal because I actually thought that was a brilliant idea for that town. I really did. Yeah. But when Bob proposed it, I mean, the adjacent surprising one was the hookup Alexis got them for all that raw milk. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a checkpoint. It's normal. Just be cool. Be cool. <laughs> Every time she says a story from her past, the way Johnny looks at her is just phenomenal. <laughs> but I really, the bagel idea, I really didn't think was a good business idea. I don't, I want to wonder why Johnny disregarded it because he never landed on a solid business idea other than the hotel. Yeah. But that took him until like what, season four or five? Five. I think it was five. five yeah. Four, I think. It might have been the end of four. I think that he might have proposed it to Stevie in four and they might have actively been doing it in five. But I thought that that was a good idea. Yeah, I did too. The other one that, al that almost hit my list but is an honorable mention, Bob's walk surprised me. <laughs> his, his, little, his little half jog walk, that surprised me a bit. <laughs> At first, I thought it was just when we were first watching it through, we luckily waited until it was on Netflix so we could watch it all the way through. Yeah. And I love that Melanie muted because she's laughing so hysterically right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt. But then when we first saw him do that, I was like, what is he is he running right there? What is he doing right there? And my husband completely missed it. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then it came back and I'm like, no, he's actually, that's how he walks. Do you see that? And so every time Bob came on the screen, we just could not stop laughing. Like we were like little child giggling every time Bob walked on the screen. And he always, like, even when he pitched the bagel idea, like he kind of was like, ha ha. <laughs> Maybe it's surprising that it came from Bob. Maybe that's a surprising part. I don't know. My husband just said he completely missed that. And now he's like going over to the other room. To like <laughs> he missed the Bob walk? He missed the Bob walk. How? I did it. I did it. <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> What's your number seven? I know he missed it or he forgot about it. But, <laughs> um, um, my number seven. It's not that surprising, but it was a little bit surprising of how awesome it was. Was a little bit of Alexis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> It was also a little surprising that she got her own show. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not just that she what got her own show, but that it was canceled. I mean, the adventure she went on. Yes. I, I would like to. I, I would her. totally I watch that show. Like, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit single, even when I'm not. <laughs> just. <laughs> I'm looking at a picture right right now of her dressed up as. Well, not dressed up as, but what she's wearing during that scene. <laughs> she's coming back. <laughs> and the way Moira and Jocelyn kind of slink lower and lower in their chairs as she's singing it to audition for the cabaret. <laughs> we now know why Alexis was never asked to join the jazz gal. <laughs> yes. No. Um. <laughs> and I love that she was so certain of her talent. Like, that takes gut to be that certain of your talent. To be like, All right, when do I start on the show? <laughs> She you was know what? Very that confident. is a talent. That is a talent to do what she did in front of everyone. That it sure is of some. That kind. is a talent, man. And <laughs> if this was the real world, I would love to see her on The Mass Singer. Yes. I would totally be on for that. Oh, I think yeah, we could all call it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we'd all be like, uh, <laughs> I think we would all know. <laughs> yeah. I think it was also pretty pretty surprising that she could do that entire dance in those boots. Like, I know. I was. I know, I was right? Impressed. I would fall on my face. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to stand up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Melody, what's your number seven? Um, number seven is um, laughing. <laughs> what? <laughs> what Moira wore, wore to um, officiate the wedding. <laughs> oh, oh, she dressed up like the Pope. <laughs> yeah, when those doors <laughs> opened and she walked out. I lost it. <laughs> Even the way her wig curled from the bottom up to cover her the bottom of her hat was hilarious. I want to know what wig that was. I do not I know. I gotta pay attention. Which wig oh, was it? I just thought of an I honorable mention that's not on my list, and I'm gonna say it real quick before because we're on wigs. When she got the blowout to look like Jocelyn, and she yes. actually allowed someone to do that to her. It's I know. Crazy. That is pretty surprising. Actually. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of another one. Tiffany, go. What's your number seven? Um, the housewarming party for David and Patrick when Ted came over and they all oh, played yeah. spin the bottle. Yeah. Oh, God, I, kissed him. I was not expecting no. Ted to kiss David. No, I was Patrick's even, reaction to this. Yes. <laughs> that was a good one. That should have been on my list too. <laughs> I love that Patrick and uh, Alexis were both completely destroyed by that kiss. Like, <laughs> yes, clearly they're not into each other. I mean, obviously, but that was funny. Oh, that was okay, guys, one. you're a little ridiculous here. <laughs> yep, that was a great one. I like that one. <laughs> yes, my number seven is maybe not as surprising, but the fact that um, it just showed a lot of growth. David buying that house. Oh yeah. In the end. Yes. Yes. Because his plan was to go to New York and that was what he was going to do. And he, Patrick was going to come with it. It was going to be great. And then he gave everything up that he had planned to stay with Patrick and buy that house and to do something. Because the whole relationship, I mean, I love their relationship, but the whole time it was a lot of Patrick doing things for David. Yeah. And this is a huge moment where David did something huge for Patrick. I mean, this is probably the biggest thing David's done for anybody ever. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and that was that was the number one growth. Yeah, there's nothing funny about that one. That was just pure sweet. I know, that's a good one though. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that was my number one. Was it? <laughs> yes, was it? I love that moment. Aww. And him and Stevie in the hood of the car when they're crying. Yeah. I can't. Ugh. I have no dry face after that scene. No, not once. I can't watch that without crying. <laughs> It was so sweet. And the fact that Stevie was able to actually cry openly in front of someone. And you could tell that neither one of them wanted to be crying, but they still, it, they couldn't stop it from happening. I love that. I thought that was really yeah. sweet too. That was a good one. Yeah. All right. What's your number six, Amanda? All right. It is when Johnny offered to be business partners with Stevie. That was surprising. I didn't expect it. No. I loved it. 
it needed to be on my list. <laughs> I kind of expected Johnny to fully take over everything. Yeah, I did that's too. what I was thinking he would do. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did too, and I'm I'm glad it. I keep saying it, but I'm like I'm I'm glad where they kept going with the show. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. you think it'd be going one spot, and then it would either turn or just actually go the way it was supposed to go. It yeah. was they did it wonderfully. Mm-hmm. But. And I love that Moira and Johnny were basically surrogate parents to, to Stevie. Yeah. Because like Melanie really was talking were. about earlier when, when Moira went up to her and said, you know, here, I, this is your part. You relate to this. And Johnny said, here, I have faith that you can do this business with me. Yeah. And they both, Stevie needed that so much more than even David and Alexis needed it. Because she, mm-hmm. like Melanie pointed out earlier, she had no one. And Johnny yeah. and Moira fully stepped at the, up to the plate and she was a member of their family by the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely. It. I loved their growth mm-hmm. there they're little they're, they still have their little answers. i don't know i was just watching that first episode today and the second there was i watched the first and second episode today so those two are just really fresh in my yeah. mind being with him trying to get the towel from uh, david trying to get the towel from stevie <laughs> and uh moira threat not threatening her accusing her of stealing her earrings no she didn't accuse her she did not accuse her she yes. asked politely <laughs> she asked politely <laughs> <laughs> and then david came in i moved them <laughs> and when he's like does there is there a spa have you heard this place <laughs> <There's one. laughs> just just the towels then just the towels just the towels <laughs> Melody, what's your number six? Oh man. Um, number six is surprising how low it is. Remember, I was just putting stuff. I'm just going to put it because I don't know where else to put it. Um, Stevie and David. Yep, that was on my list too. Um, <laughs> that was my um, number one. <laughs> <laughs> I I just the whole thwarting expectations on that, like you know, you saw and I'm like. And at first I was like, it's so weird because I almost see a flirtation here, but mm-hmm. I'm like, there's no way he's totally gay. Right. <laughs> like, and, um, I, it's just the fact that like, I think I read somewhere and I don't know if it's true. So people don't come at me. I read it. Sorry, <laughs> but he's the first openly pansexual character on an American show um it was a canadian show oh canadian american and and like an english speaking country is the mm-hmm. way i understood it um i don't think that's exactly true because i would argue torchwood did it too but um it's um but it was different because it was with you know but uh aliens and things um, but, um i think um I just think it's different. It shows like how far we come because like I remember like I'm old, so like I watched like Buffy the Vampire Slayer yes! and like they yeah, do. they wouldn't let Willow <laughs> be bisexual. Like they just weren't even gonna go there, even though they already kind of did. Now we're to a point where nope, you can do this. It's totally okay. That's just life, and it's the reality for a lot of people. And yeah, um, yeah. and I like that. And I like that they just became like the best of friends. Like there was not, you know, it was some sadness, but it wasn't sadness on Stevie's part. Like she really wanted to be with David in the end. I think there was sadness on like just not having someone, you know, or just not having what Patrick and Stevie, Patrick and David had, even though they did everything they could to put, make Stevie a third non-sexual partner in their relationship. Oh my gosh. That, That relationship almost made it on my list. But with so with much. that, I think that for me, I was I really wanted Stevie and David to be a thing. I really did. Yeah, I did too. That first, was the yeah. first person that you could tell Stevie had connected mm-hmm. with almost ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were just so well matched, but I think probably too well matched. <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine too, what, too. Uh, what a permanent mm-hmm. relationship with them would look like? <laughs> yeah well i mean yeah and yeah it's they really both needed someone opposite. to be able to open them up so like mm-hmm. i really wanted to be together because i saw the connection but i right. thought what stevie thought but what's funny is that yeah. is that patrick mellowed both of them down 
in different ways, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I love that about him that he's, and that's what you want to find. You want to find somebody that balances you. You don't want to find, you know, your male equivalent, <laughs> um, you know, that's not necessarily the best relationship, but I think, um, I guess I would have liked to see Stevie in a relationship before. And if they ever do a movie or something, I'm sure that's where they'll go, but yeah. yeah, I'm hoping, hoping for the Shit's Creek movie. I bet it'll happen. That would be awesome. <laughs> should do that. Be awesome. Yeah, I hope so. Tiffany, what's your number six? Um, the the incident episode with David's oopsie daisy. I uh, wasn't expecting oh, that. Oh, the pee. Yes, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that to be thrown in there. But that was definitely oh, a very entertaining okay. storyline. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about something else for a second. Okay. So that's what they used to call his his bedtime accidents. Is it yeah. Zipsy Daisy. Daisies. <laughs> no, there's something else at the very end that it I I I don't know. I'm done. But um <laughs> and the I fact that Moira that. accidentally live streamed <laughs> that problem. Yes. All mm -hmm. I forgot about that. Yes. <laughs> I liked when they were at the restaurant talking to Patrick about it and they're like, yeah, we're going to remove it. And he's like, it's still live. Yeah. Removing it now. <laughs> I'm going to sit here until it's gone. <laughs> oh. That was surprising. <laughs> That's a good one. My number six was Stevie as a flight attendant. I don't know about oh, you guys, yeah. but um, I don't think she has the right personality for that. No, <laughs> not either. Not at all. So she's how's like she... the opposite of a yes. flight attendant. So how no. she got, I mean, granted, it was a terrible airline, but still, the fact that she got in over even David, it's who at least tend to be yeah. social and kind, was, was pretty shocking to me. And then it made me want to go find that airline and have CV as my flight attendant. I would totally dig Stevie as my flight attendant. Like, I'd be like, yes. I don't know about where you guys live. <laughs> but in, like, the Midwest, there's this restaurant, or used to be this restaurant called Ed DeBevix. I don't know if you guys have ever mm -hmm. heard of that. But it's this restaurant where all the wait staff do nothing but insult you and yell at you. Oh, it's that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of that one. Yeah. yeah. But it takes a certain kind of personality to enjoy that. And I don't yeah. think people on a flight really want to enjoy that. Amanda, what's your number five? Number five is when Alexis needed a hug from David after she broke up from with a uh, mutt. Oh yeah, mm. I love that. Was that. Sweet. that was really sweet. It yeah, I like the little David and Alexis moments. Yeah, <laughs> I love their their bond. I do too, because it's it's deeper than you think it is. It is. Hello. And like when they were in the car, this sorry, I'm gonna throw in this other honorable mention. When they were in the car and she was, I think they were going out to um Ted's new girlfriend's place to sample the food. Oh yeah. They didn't know it was mm -hmm. Ted's new girlfriend at the time. But mm -hmm. she was saying all these things about when she was gone. He's like, You don't have any idea how stressful it was for me that I never knew where you were. And that that was just it one, it was surprising. And even Alexis was completely surprised by that. Yeah. But that was so sweet. It was. I loved, I love, love, love their relationship. Mm -hmm. Melanie, what's your number five? I had to think about what I meant by it. Cause like I, I wrote the proposal and I'm like, which one? <laughs> but I, I think I meant, I, I'm almost positive that I meant um, David and Patrick. That um, because you actually, how it happened. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know why I was surprised by this. This is obvious this is gonna happen, like looking back, but like I don't and it kinda of, it brings up one of my favorite things about David that we haven't really talked about is how much of a chow hound he is. Like <laughs> you 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 put food in front of him or you give him motivation for food and he'll be like, Yes, yeah, got to get there. <laughs> that was the that reason was I started doing one. the recipes <laughs> for our group was because of yeah. David Rose. That's yeah. why I chose the recipes. He loves food. <laughs> I think was what was more surprising one. to me about that one is how he, I mean, does he know David? I, that David was, that's why, I have, it that's why I have it on my list because of the hike. Like, the hike, yeah. yeah. It's, that's it's like, not David. <laughs> I mean, it, it turned out beautifully in the yeah, end. I absolutely adore that scene, but it's, it's not David. <laughs> no, 
it's not David. I think it was, I think this idea was for them to do something different and, and get kind of get him not, you know, it's just like, I don't know. I think he thought if he would appreciate it. I think David did appreciate it. The kind of snarkiness on it. You know what I was saying? Like, like, oh, we're going to do this thing you're going to hate. And at the end, it's going to turn into some magical moment. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe I'm overthinking that. But that <laughs> seems very, very David. So, well, David did ask I, for a picnic too. But that's yeah, that was yeah. not what he had in mind. Yeah. I, definitely memorable. Yeah. And then didn't you know David what? carry it's him up the hill day, on his back? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's all Can't good. <laughs> Physical labor, not David's thing. No, <laughs> anything that requires any effort. Um, yeah, and then when they finally got to the that. top, and Patrick's like, "Let's just go back." <laughs> no, I hiked all this way. I want some cheese. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but David is so much. David is my spirit animal. I'm just right. putting it out there. <laughs> 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 Like I was the Gatlin and like there was this thing I'm like I really want to do it because I wanted to see the view and like halfway after hiking up halfway to this thing I'm like this sucks and I'm like I'm like I just want some food. The reward does not outweigh the effort. <laughs> no. Did anybody else love that the engagement ring was four rings? <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> It <laughs> looks like exactly the four rings he had on the other hand already. Different color. Right. I think, yeah, I was yeah, like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> one was gold, one was silver, I think. <laughs> Tiffany, what do you remember what it looked like? You don't remember what it looked like? No. It's it was just well, four flat had, rings. Um, it was one piece of paper. Sam Levy on the podcast, we will have to ask him. Yes. Um, exactly what he was thinking with this whole proposal. Hey, like, we're trying to get Dan Levy on this podcast. I we are I trying really to get you, Dan Levy. I'm looking right at you right now. You can't see that. Oh, this is on audio. We and know I you're not. That, but we are it's looking at you. <laughs> but his rings, it was one piece. I believe it was one piece. And it was four rings. That's how I, but maybe it was four different rings, but they were all, oh, these, yeah, they, were all flat, rings. they were all flat, wide rings. No design, no embellishment, just the rings. But I like that. Mm-hmm. That was David. That yeah. is David. Yeah. Tiffany, what's your number five? Well, Amanda's looking something up. <laughs> um I see you Googling. I am. He's trying to find Dan Levy. Get him <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm trying to find the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you I can do my number my number four. No, no, Tiffany and I have to do our fives yet, Speedy. Oh, go. Go ahead, Tiffany. Oh. Um well, I had mentioned the general store opening early or er, yeah, deciding to open the general store earlier, but the actual friends and family opening oh, yeah. was on my list because that oh, whole yes. episode is just absolutely hilarious from start to finish. <laughs> when yes, the lady so cusses him out in the line. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of language will not be tolerated at Rose Apothecary. <laughs> <Carey. laughs> doesn't, doesn't he say, who are you? Who the F are you? Yes. <laughs> The whole like early days of that business were just hilarious. Like when the kids were coming in and stealing. Oh, oh my gosh! That was who was it? Patrick who figured that out? Yes, and he's like, "Oh God!" Like you realize what they're doing, right? David was so proud that yeah, that's what it was because David was so proud that they liked his attire and they were asking what his fashion sense. <laughs> My number five was uh, that Moira, Moira Rose is dead. <laughs> it, she found out online that she died. All these flowers just suddenly started coming to the hotel, and she was crying at first. And she's like, I died? <laughs> but then she played it up. She let the whole town believe she was dead, and then she showed up to a jazz gal's <laughs> memorial. Didn't she say something like, well, let's just pretend it didn't happen. Go on with the memorials. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I love that one. <laughs> Maybe we should have put the top ten funniest moments. That would have been a much longer show, but still. <laughs> how would we rate it down to ten? I don't like, know. Funniest moments from every episode. <laughs> a right, lot so of honorable <laughs> mentions. Yes, yeah. a lot. Amanda, what's your number four? My number four is Alexis's graduation when Moira. I almost put that down. Yes. 
that was I don't know what I was shocked. I think I was more shocked because of more well, it's just Moira fashion yeah. for what she did. I don't want to mm-hmm. say I was like shocked by it. Well, she but... openly was affectionate, which is not her thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. The whole I don't know. I love that whole mm-hmm. that whole episode is just phenomenal, but did anyone else think it was weird were. that Ted got to sit with the graduates next to Alexis? Yeah, like why? Yes. Why? Because that's what Alexis wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so did I understand. Whatever that. Alexis wants, man. And um, I did figure out why he proposed with four rings. Why? He proposed because David always wore yeah those rings on his hand. So that's why I didn't know. You didn't. How did you not know that? I that was because when he opened the box, he's wearing his four rings, and then he opens the box two four rings. I don't know. I guess I've okay. I've only seen the series once. That's true. I'm re like I said. I'm rewatching right now, but I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. number four. Who's who's got to go for number four? Melanie. Melanie? Simply the best. <laughs> Which um, one? The first. Well, when we first sing it, when they first, Patrick's when he first sings it, um, yeah, when Patrick sings "Simply the Best," um, I never liked the song, so it was surprising to me that I liked the song. <laughs> like, I, I'm a huge Tina Turner fan, not a fan of this song. Um, <laughs> and it's just it reminds me of really bad Carnival Cruises, you know, commercials. Um, <laughs> um, I. <laughs> When I realized what he was singing, I'm like, oh, no. (laughs) And then then it was, like, really good and really touching and really um, sweet. And um, every time I watch it, I cry. So Yeah. Um, And I was not shocked. Like, like adults do not walk. Like, this is, it's, I wasn't surprised because they didn't do it with the jazz gals. They didn't, like, (laughs) play that as a joke. Like, they played the realism of it. Like, in real life, adults who cannot sing. Do not go in front of people and decide to just, you know, do a touching moment to their to their boyfriends. Um, but no, not only Noah, but Patrick always could sing. He owned a guitar. Yeah. He could always sing. So it's not like he didn't yeah, know how to yeah. sing. Yeah. Well, I don't think that David knew that. No, because he never shared that with him until yeah. the day. No, out. Je- Patrick definitely knew that. That's what I meant. I I can't imagine like unless the actor could sing that they would do that oh, you know yeah. what i'm saying i just yeah um but i was um i mean it was surprising how good because he's really good um and i'm glad he didn't exploit that too much i mean they exploited mm-hmm. it a little but not too, too sweet much. rather than showy yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um i think uh i i guess one of the weirder parts of it is um in that scene and it, I guess I always put that down because it really is very surprising to me that Jocelyn would think it's okay to go up to Moira in the middle of this in the middle of a performance by Patrick to like tell her that she's the sex of her baby I was like what like who yeah. why would you do that you sing like I, I think she thought like open mic not as not as formal yeah well i I know i know the real reason do you guys know the real reason it happened was it so um showed yeah no yeah like the actual like so okay so the real um the real reason why they did that is because um catherine o'hare was getting so emotional um in it that and it was like so almost and she just couldn't shut it off. She just started crying. And you can see it there. She just couldn't stop. And it was kind of un And like she realized that, but she just couldn't stop. And yeah. so they, and so um, Dan had Jocelyn do that to kind of break up the tension in the scene. That because it was so, yeah, it was so like I kind of, that, yeah. I read that, I read that in like some article about like things, you know, that you didn't know or whatever. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. I'll have to go back and watch that. That yeah, was my number know. three, too. Well, then you don't get to say a number three. Nope. Tiffany, what's your number four? 
that yeah that was that was my number three also actually <laughs> um my number four was the love letters that Moira wrote to Johnny oh I forgot oh, yeah. about those forgot she wrote oh, I totally forgot about those I almost put that on my list today I absolutely forgot about that scene yeah she was all freaking out about Johnny having an affair with someone, not even remembering she was the one that wrote all the. <laughs> that seems very Moira. It was all those all those benzos that she took. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of benzos, why don't I remember this game? Because we got really good at it. <laughs> Sorry, but that, that was an obscure reference to what you were saying. It had nothing to do with what you were saying, Tiffany. <laughs> My number four is that Bob and Gwen break up. Yeah. I was surprised yeah. by that turn of events. And the yeah. fact that she had like this hot biker boyfriend was weird. When Bob tried to do his little jaunt in that complete leather suit. <laughs> that was, yes. That was my favorite Bob walk, I think, was in all leather. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, was, uh, that was surprising to me that they broke up. I mean, you see them at the cabin, and they politely let Johnny and Moira do their thing, but they still seem like they, they liked each other's company. That was a weird Yeah, and scene. Bob's always talking about Gwen yes. all the time. And yeah. then it's like, Gwen left me. Yeah, what? he's devoted to her. <laughs> Ungrateful lady. Speaking, speaking of Bob, <laughs> I was surprised by the funeral he asked Johnny to speak at. Oh yeah! <laughs> the freak accident that he got caught. Oh, God, he this, this, it's so bad that this storyline makes me laugh every time because it's really it's a suicide. It shouldn't be funny, but the way they wrote this scene of Bob up there going, the freak accident being caught in a ceiling fan, and the look on Johnny's face as he looks at my we're like, I can't speak. I can't talk after this. <laughs> Poor oblivious. That's probably what happened is Bob is so oblivious he didn't realize that Gwen actually couldn't stand him. I imagine he's hard to live with. Yeah. Just saying. She couldn't handle the Bob job. That's, no. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> All right, Amanda, your number three was a David and Patrick moment. I can give an honorable mention. Yes, give an honorable mention. There's a lot. Um, Moira's speech to Which Stevie. One? after the cabaret performance after? yeah that was good that was a good one i was just reading it to refresh my mind but yes it was super profound too and the way she saw stevie the way she found like who stevie was was really yes intense it was very not moira mm -hmm. she doesn't get enough credit for how observant she is because she never was before yeah but once she was in shit street she was forced to be observant mm-hmm yeah, she really, I love that moment. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Melanie, what is your number three? Um, my number three is that Roland um, bought the inn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That second I, one, right? Yeah, the second one. Um, and the, um, well, that he helped, you know, he helped save everything. Um, it mm -hmm. ended up being. It ended up being um, Roland in the end um, with, and I was like, and that they would actually take out a second mortgage on their own <laughs> seems like, whoa. yeah. But you know, um, it just showed. I mean, I think I don't think of, you know, a lot of people say they hate Roland or whatever, and I I get it. He's a little over the top sometimes. I love Roland. I mean, if Roland was a real person, he is the most giving, true, honest thoughtful person in the whole world like yeah. and like you always know people you know in people like moment, are a little yes. weird right yeah who are a little maybe a little off or a little weird but they're just truly wonderful beautiful humans and oh yeah and that's Roland and I I love that and so I didn't have anything with Roland I'm like I have to have <laughs> something with Roland you know so um yeah I just I love him and um and Chris Elliott does not look like that, guys. Like, look at no. him. He always, he's but he prefers to play characters that he always yeah. adds the weird body ailments to his character. Right, That's right. Chris Elliott, 100%. But I defy Chris Elliott to be in the show and tell me that he is not Roland shit. 
Oh, he probably is. Saying that name together for the first time when my husband heard together, he lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's an embarrassing amount of times every time I say that name and I just mm-hmm. laugh. But you know, that's how the show started. Like, yeah. that it's just funny that we exactly. just start laughing what we say it i was trying to explain the show to my mom i was like well you have the mayor and that's rolling shit and then he's like wait what i'm like in the middle of a nail salon trying to explain the show to her and just does not sound okay at all it doesn't like, oh it my sounds gosh. Like you swear it all the time <laughs> so tiffany your number three was also david and patrick singing or patrick singing simply best do you have an honorable mention yes um, I'm trying to think. Oh, the uh, thruple. Yeah, that was I, I weird. Was, it, it was really weird. I was not expecting that. I was yeah, I was surprised that was- by that whole storyline. It was that even was- weirder that Jake didn't tell anybody that that's what he was doing. Like he just assumed. Yeah. How just- how would you assume everyone knows? Right. Like it's completely normal for everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. <laughs> And then when he parks in front of the inn or the motel and David goes out there to meet him, he's like, uh, I'm actually here for Stevie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his parents and his sister behind him mocking him. Real weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Jake is a good looking guy. So he was he can get away with an awful guy. lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like Jake. My number three is also a rolling moment, Melanie. And it was oh. my husband's. I asked my husband for it because he loves the show with me. I asked him for um moments and his was when randall or when roland fixes the sign the first time <laughs> don't worry it's his sister <laughs> love that one I just, I actually... how does that make it any better <laughs> <laughs> well he wouldn't be doing that with it i don't know what it's like where you come from johnny but he wouldn't around here we don't do that with our sisters <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to add on to that and say the sign at the end where it was Johnny and Moira, but Johnny was the girl and Moira was the guy. <laughs> yes. he just Roland just can't get one right. He just can't. He can't get it. <laughs> he tries. All right. What's your number two, Amanda? Number two. Oh, when Alexis told Ted she loved him. Oh, that was so sweet. I love that moment. So that is amazing. It just sounded so innocent. Mm-hmm. It's just whole, so wholesome and innocent. I didn't know she was actually going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was going to like have a meltdown. Yeah, I didn't know if it was actually ever going to come out. <laughs> it's true. What about you, Melanie? What's your number two? Um. It's also a Ted and Alexis. Um, it is um, Ted and Alexis breaking up. Ah, I was just writing that down for an honorable mention. Um, I, I I was really surprised by it. Um, yeah. It's a scene that always makes me cry. The whole last episode makes me cry in a mm-hmm. lot of ways. But um, it, uh, and you know, we were watching it, you know, you obviously knew it was ended. And so it's like, I, I was just bawling the whole episode. But um just the fact how much growth both of them did and you know how this isn't goodbye it's see you later and yeah. it's just and i have i somewhere in my heart i hope it works out for them yeah. and um sometime but that they both deserve the chance to have their dreams and and pursue them yeah and you know let them go and if it comes back I mean, that's what it is, but we, you know, you want everything wrapped up in a little bow. And I think, you know, the only people that were ready to wrap anything up in a little bow at that point was David and Patrick. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that was right for yeah. both of them to discover who they really are and do passion projects for a while. Mm-hmm. And I love how the, how Daniel Levy set that up because it leaves yeah. it open for her to have the happy ending, but he also recognized mm-hmm. that she, for the first time, was able to be herself out in yeah. the world, doing something for herself yeah. in a way that she was never allowed to before. Yeah, and like if she didn't, and I think it sets up for a great happy ending because mm-hmm. if either of them was denied these opportunities, they would resent each other. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it wouldn't even be intentional. It would be 
that's just what would happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it's just, it sets it up for even better happy ending, mm-hmm. I hope. In the movie, that's coming. Exactly. Right? And, <laughs> and you know, if that's nothing so else, they will always have Alexis the Fly. Right. Exactly. exactly. Alexis the that fly. can uh, mate with itself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Maybe also, that's maybe, really maybe weird storyline. Um, oh no! Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh no, Alexis with the uh, egg donor, <laughs> <laughs> or not egg donor, um, sperm donor. Yeah. Amanda, what's your uh, what's your number two? Tiffany, did you just go for yours, Amanda? Mm-hmm. Oh, Tiffany, it goes Melanie, me, then. Melanie, then Tiffany. Okay, Tiffany, I can't. I'm. I'm confused. Tiffany, what's your number two? My top two were actually from the last episode. The also back to don't worry, it's his sister. When Alexis wore the white dress that oh, wasn't wedding a dress. wedding dress, it was so a wedding dress. <laughs> Looking down, da- watching them walk down the aisle, all I could think, don't worry, it's his sister. I love though, right before they walked in the, the aisle, she looks at David and says. David, I think you're right. And he went, "Uh uh-huh, yeah. (laughs) About what? (laughs) (laughs) I just just love them both so much. They're just both so amazing. My number two is that Jocelyn is pregnant. Oh. That was a, that's a big time gap between their two kids. (laughs) Yeah. That was... I don't know what I would do with myself. Yeah, in line with that is that Mutt was their son. That kind of blew my mind. Who knows? Yeah, more like I had a hunch it was though. I don't know why. It was just it, there was something about it. I'm like, no, it's totally her kid. I was like, she. They had him as a teenager, and that wouldn't surprise me if like Mutt or if, if Roland and Jocelyn had gotten pregnant. When she was a teenager, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But I mean, it is Shit's it Creek, and it's a tiny town, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they are, and that they were people that, despite that, could make it work because they're Jocelyn and Roland, you yeah. know. So yeah, I do, I do love yeah. when uh, Johnny and Roland were talking at their roast where they were both stoned, and Johnny was like, "My son's a pansexual. What's that mean? He loves everybody. Yeah, my son yeah. lives in a barn." <laughs> <laughs> totally the same thing <laughs> anyway that jocelyn is pregnant was surprising to me it was and it i like i liked how um they played it up that uh it was alexis's how alexis played that up with david but when when i had the twins david you're gonna have to take care of them <laughs> oh god i forgot about that part <laughs> number one moment amanda go well my number one moment was when patrick proposed to david so oh, yeah that's right yep i'll just throw in a little honorable mention that shouldn't take us too long and that is david on the amish farm <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, I almost put that on my list, actually. <laughs> Such a fantastic moment. There are two, three things I love about that scene. One, it's where he's like, no, I'm not ready to leave yet. And the girl goes, there's a bug on you. And then he flips out. <laughs> but then he also says, I texted Alexis. And she says, what? Well, like, I forgot to reply to one text, David. <laughs> <laughs> third thing about that is that the Amish did not want him anymore. No, <laughs> no. they were like, we get, get him out. <laughs> That's great. Uh, <laughs> that was a good scene. All right, Melanie, what's your number one? Um, well, I teased it earlier, but um, number one is maybe this time. I'm not going to oh. sing anymore. Yep. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I asked my husband for an honorable mention because we watched the show together too. And um, he said, Basically, he couldn't pick out which one, but he said anytime that sign changed, it was amazing. Every so, time what changed? Yeah. The sign. Oh, yep. It's great. The welcome to Shit's That was what my husband loved, too. Um, <laughs> it, um, and at the end with the sweet, you know, the sweet way with um, all three, you know, the, the roses on, I made the sign. 
Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then when Johnny says, when Moira says, what are you doing, Johnny? I just want one last look at it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's great. They'll be back. They'll be back. Don't worry. Time. It's his sister. <laughs> well, yeah, they have to come back. David lives there. I mean, you know. And he's business partners with, with Stevie and Roland now. So Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. But you know, there's no way that David Rhodes is not hosting Thanksgiving. <laughs> no. No way. Even no. Come on. He's definitely him. Yeah. He's definitely him. <laughs> really? Wow, guys. <laughs> Amanda, it's only 9.30 our time. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, what's your number one? Nap. That's the only reason why I'm awake. Only reason. <laughs> My number one was the final episode with the happy ending. Oh, ah! the happy ending surprised you that they were happy? Yeah. happy? <laughs> the happy ending oh, surprised happy. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was not expecting that. But I like the way Patrick... Patrick explained it. I just left a bunch of money on the table and told the guy to take good care of you. <laughs> I can see oh now God. how someone would interpret that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess what's so surprising is that David was like so sure that Patrick right? was on board with this. Well, why <laughs> would you think he would do that for you on your wedding day? Come on. <laughs> I love like that's not Patrick at all. <laughs> no, it's totally not Patrick. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was I, I don't know why. I just I just watched the finale one like a month ago and I forgot about that. I did too. <laughs> Man. So my number one was Stevie and David together, but I'm gonna throw an honorable mention. Um, and it's when David sings simply the best. Because that oh, is so yeah. out of character for oh, David. Oh yeah. And I love the background story of that. That one, he was in a leather sweater, which is oh, hilarious. He was two, drenched in sweat. That Daniel Levy didn't wasn't like excited to do that scene. So he, he and Noah, what's his last name? Brewer. Yeah, I think Brewer. That um, they went up before the scene. They slammed back some Boone's Farm, and Daniel Levy was a little bit drunk when he said when he did that song. Kind of, I love you that it comes out in his character that you had to. Oh think, yeah. Okay, David Rose has got to be drunk in this scene because there's no way. And even Patrick says, you know, people can see you, right? <laughs> so that is, that's my honorable mention is when he does that. And I just, I love how you could tell that he just feels so awkward when he's doing it. And yes. that's, that is part Daniel Levy, part David. <laughs> yeah. For the awkward doing that. But I love that one. It's yeah, such his a moves. good fallback. I can't move like that. So good job, Daniel Levy. You look spectacular. Yes. And he was Daniel sweating. Levy, yeah, he's yeah. He said, the, I think they only did one take and that was it because he was sweating and he didn't want to do it again and he was a little yep. drunk. So they were like, yep, oh, that's it. We're done. I am blaming him. Not one bit. Does anyone else have any honorable mentions? I think the I whole one. I have four. You have four? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Melanie. What's have your honorable one. mention? Oh, huh? no. It's, you guys go first. Oh, mine is when uh, Johnny and Roland got high together and talked about kids <laughs> Does it, when they're like we have a little something and more is like amateurs <laughs> <laughs> yes also another honorable mention why in the world did jocelyn think that david rose would be a great person to host a, a baby shower a classy know, upbeat right? party yes a baby shower have you ever seen him with a child like, i don't think he likes kids very much <laughs> no but he likes parties he does but high class parties not baby showers <laughs> <laughs> melanie what was your honorable mention oh no i don't have one. Oh, i thought you, I mean, said I what we you, did, you have any <laughs> No, I went through all mine because I had a lot of doubles that everybody else did. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I have four. <laughs> One is when David walks in on Johnny and Moira. <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and when they come, when Johnny and Moira come back out and Johnny's trying to like defuse it and Moira comes out and says, when we are married, it is not just for procreating, David. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you keep and Alexis is having a meltdown underneath their sheets and no stop 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 
I mean, I didn't expect them, one, to be doing that in that room so close to their kids because, I don't know, they just don't seem like that type of people. But two, for David to just walk into his parents' bedroom at that time of the day. Like, why? Why, man? <laughs> Could you knock me? too comfortable. Yes. <laughs> the other one, oh, one of my four, I, I moved to a number one. The other one is how, how Patrick said I love you to David for the first time. And yeah. in the shop and he was like quoting Mariah Carey and he just slipped it in there and then David just, just kind of like what <laughs> <laughs> and he was like Patrick said something like I thought it would be cute and now that it happened I want to take it back and it was a mistake and I didn't <laughs> oh. isn't that when David I think that's the scene where David was like I'm gonna go is there anything you need while I'm out while I'm running away from you and Patrick was like I'd love a tea and he comes back and Patrick was like this would be really great if I had some tea. <laughs> and David just mouths O F. <laughs> that whole scene, I like that scene. That was that was uh, great. Yeah, that was a and good the, one. The other surprising moment for me was when their Johnny Moira's rich friends came to town, and they were yeah. running into the town and making fun of it and saying all these terrible things about it. And Johnny stands up for the town and says, "No, it's called Shit's Creek, and that's where we live." That was surprising yeah. me that they didn't they didn't care. That was the moment they stopped caring about putting on that persona for their friends. Yeah. I love that scene. That yeah. was yeah, I was really proud of Johnny in that moment. Absolutely. That was a growth scene, but it also was a surprising one because that was still relatively early on to them coming to Shits Creek. Yeah. And their friends are horrible people. They really are. They were. They were the worst. Ugh. All of their friends. Like even when oh. Alexis was talking to David, has any of your friends contacted you? They're really busy with their lives right now. <laughs> Alexis's friends who come back to try to get her to go, oh. rapid people. All of Moira's friends have gotten her, like her one friend got her booted from the show because she was too too much more famous than he was. That's a terrible sentence. Yeah. <laughs> how do I say that sentence? He was, how, how do I say that sentence? He got mad because she was so much, getting so much more famous than him. That's how I say it. That's how it goes. I'm not an idiot. I'm just tired. He was more popular. She yeah. was more popular than him. She was and getting Johnny to be Moore. more popular than him. There you go. There you go. But I'm after I figured it out, people. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were um, friends who came were terrible people. I um, do. I did find an honorable mention. Okay. Were you done? Maureen, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I did find one. Um, the honeymoon suite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait. The one in the motel that was Stevie and David, or the presidential Stevie, suite in the one that no, it was, it was Stevie and David was the one I was thinking of, um, where they went to that hotel and for some reason, oh, to get the better thing, to get the better room, they said that they were married, but this hotel went all out. Like, well, um, <laughs> wasn't that so she could meet? Um, what was that guy's name? Amir. Oh, Amir. Yeah. Wasn't that why they were there in the first place? Was, I think was so, but it didn't show up. up. So yeah, yeah, it ended up being Stevie because, and yeah, it was supposed to be yeah. her and Amir's room. But yeah, it was supposed to, be, and it was like as a joke. I think David called in or called in the. If he actually made the reservation for, her and he said, "No, no, no, we're going to get you a better room." And then they went all out. Like he didn't expect them to, like you know, line the. Yeah. They, they had the little sauna. table in the restaurant oh, yeah, with the, the lovers swan. menu. <laughs> they had little swans. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Are there any other surprising moments we can think to throw out here at the end? I don't think so. No. I mean, I'm sure if I really thought about it, I could. <laughs> no, I have I mean, to I tell you, I'm really show. looking forward to our next Shift's Creek podcast. Yes. yes. I don't think it's going to be a top 10 moment. I think we're just going to take a season and talk about it because yeah. every season has so many good things in it. Yeah. And I'm really, really excited to. And we aren't going to see that for another four weeks. Yeah. Okay. So um, excited for that one. Be on the lookout for that. And I think that, uh, I think that wraps it up for our top 10 surprising moments. And remember, these were not the only surprising moments and these were not the only things we found surprising or hilarious. These are just things that we could think of on the spot to uh say 10 surprising things <laughs> because yep. this is excellent writing and a excellently well done show and there's so much more that we probably could have said but uh we don't have six days so yeah we're gonna, we're gonna end it here and we will see when we talk about shape street next next week i believe we are talking about what we're we talking about next week uh, i think we are talking about friday night lights next week Woohoo! 
tune in for that on Wednesday night. And make sure to watch our Cruel Summer one on Sundays at 6 p.m. Central. And also on the following Sunday, we'll be talking about... What are we talking about? I think we're talking about Bridgerton the Sunday after that, I think. Or Bridgerton! So, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, see you in a week. Right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.